this week, you get the first look at Abu Dhabi Warriors. We have an exclusive interview with Mamed Khaledov and 12 more clips battle for Clip of the Week. All this and more on this week's MMA Inside the Cage. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Welcome to MMA Inside the Cage. I'm your host, Cyrus Fees. Next to me, he is the nin the ninja. Wow, congratulations, you're a ninja now. I've never seen that before. Well, I don't know where you're getting your information, but yes, that is true. I'm very, very familiar with the methods of the ninja, mm -hmm. but my repertoire in no way compares to those demonstrated by Linda, Fifty Shades of Grey this weekend wow. in Ninja Fighting. that was amazing. Let's take a look at this video right here. This is one of the best post fights I think I've ever seen. Huge props to Linda. <laughs> she worked so hard getting her first victory in kickboxing and this is what might follows be, with... It might beat out Gangnam Style is what I'm I thinking. Think so. It might just take the crown. I'll tell you what, Casey, I can't wait to show you the great stuff from Abu Dhabi mm -hmm. Warriors. It was awesome. Great trip. That's going to be in the third round. But first, let's get into the MMA News Flurry. Another big show debuted this weekend besides Abu Dhabi Warriors. It was a World Series of Fighting. Had a star-studded card going into Saturday's show. And I think many would agree that they weren't disappointed with this one. I mean, you had a lot of fights that went the way people expected them to go. Tyrone Sponge was one guy everybody wanted to see debut. He got the knockout. Anthony Johnson goes to two five where he belongs gets the big ko punch on dj linderman and andre orlovsky walks through devin cole in the first round you know miguel on hell torres takes the loss i don't think anybody expected that and gregor gracie which is a big prospect he ends up losing in his debut at the world series i love the whole package though the production was good mm -hmm. love the name there's just so much about the show i think that has potential it was the talk of the town no doubt uh, on twitter on facebook that's all you heard about uh, leading up to this show a lot of people were so amped up and excited mm -hmm. and they had NBC Sports behind it. So, uh, yeah, it, it really did follow through. They had a, a, a good roster of talent for their inaugural event. So, uh, you know, I'm anxious to see what happens next. Well, I think the series. money thing is the one thing everybody was wondering about yeah. because, you know, Affliction came in, did that thing. They tried to right off the bat get into the mix with the UFC, and they ended up failing. 352000 on the payroll. Could be criticized. What do you think about that? You think it was too much? Well, I mean, you had a big network involved, so you had to put some dough out there for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it is nowhere near the size uh, that, that you're talking about with uh, with Affliction. You're talking about a three million dollar payout for both of those events. That's just absurd. This is true. Um, Andre Orlovsky, in this instance, of course, he tops out uh, the payroll. He's got some good management. He he did it in Affliction both times. Mm -hmm. He did uh, made seven hundred fifty thousand for his first fight, and of course against Fedor, he did one point five million. So that guy really has some good management. And what he's doing. I agree. Well, it's MMAWSOF.com for official news from World Series of Fighting, and I can't wait to see what they have next for us. Another one of the events that we cover, Rough China, had their sixth event last weekend, and it was another solid outing for Joel Resnick's great show. Now, among the highlights of this one were Rodrigo Caporal picking up the knee bar submission in the main event. He advances to the big super fight in 2013. Li Pingyuan grabs the decision win, and the co-main event was also the fight of the night, and the two submissions of the night went to Lu Hong with the armbar and Yan Chun Bo with the knee bar. Now, it's all getting closer to this million dollar super fight. Yeah. And I think that's what everybody has their eyes on. What's well, actually the million RMB. It's not million dollars, it's RMB. But I think once they do it, it's really going to change the landscape of Asian MMA as it is. Big money like that always changes everything. Yeah. And there are a couple of guys, uh, events that are in contention to really take that international um, award, if you will, yeah. as, as the top promotion. And a million bucks really does a lot to get there. Now, I'm a huge fan of Rodrigo Caporal. I was a huge fan when he was in jiu-jitsu, and now doing what he's done. Of course, he come off of a big knockout victory before, and now securing the knee bar victory, which is anybody that's involved in, in, in grappling mm -hmm. understands how difficult it is to pull off that submission, even in a grappling tournament, but to do it in MMA is really exceptional. I was excited to see uh, Rodrigo Caporal get another victory. Well, I think it's all leading up, like I said, to the big super fight. Now, Rough 7 is coming up before the super fight. That's December 22nd. And, of course, check out roughchina.com for more information on that. And, finally, a few UFC snippets. Stefan Bonner and Dave Herman both were popped for separate substances after UFC 153. How do you think, you know, now that Bonner's retired, how do you think this is going to hurt his legacy in sport? Well, that's really unfortunate, especially considering that that was his retirement fight. Mm. Uh, to go out like that, it, it, it's, uh, it, there, there's been a lot of controversy in it. And I'll say this, and by no means do I support PEDs in professional sports, but... Brother, if I was going to be on steroids <laughs> in one fight, 
it would be against Anderson Silva because that dude is an absolute crusher. He is. It's sick. You know, but, Speaking of but, Spider, one, one more yeah. thing. You ready? Silva says that he wants 50% of the company, mm-hmm. of, the, of the UFC. He wants half of the company to fight John Jones. Yeah. Now, Dana White is going everywhere guaranteeing this fight. He says, I'm going to make this fight happen. Are we going to see this fight? Because that's a lot of money. Anderson Silva, I'm going to say this. If you can get $1.25 billion out of this fight, then you are absolutely the greatest MMA person, persona, anything that's ever been involved in this sport because it's never been done before. No. So props to Mr. Anderson. Still I don't think it's going to happen, but we'll see what happens. Now, we put the second series of Clip of the Week contest into effect last week, and as always, we had a great lineup of finishes. Now, we can only choose one, and this time it goes to... It was Rage in the Cage, Justin Gaethje with a big win over Drew Fickett, a real quick one. It's RageintheCage.com for more. This week, another great big prize package is up for grabs. What can they win, partner? Well, as always, one of the best products on the market, Elevation Training Mass 2.0, the Shaker Cup, and pre-workout formula from Gamma Labs, and apparel from Bamp Fought Gear and Hunter MMA. Gotta love us some Hunter MMA. Now, we are going to ask KSW's Mamed Kaladov some big questions leading up to KSW 21, and later, a full recap of Abu Dhabi Warriors with a big main event of the week. But first, it's your first four finalists for Clip of the Week. <laughs> His game plan should be close the distance, put him up against the cage, um, grind it out. You know. David Evans, oh, and a knockout. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAinsidethecagetv.com and clicking Get On Air. In the very dangerous sport of mixed martial arts, one company has your back. Combat Sports Insurance is the Southeast's newest entity, insuring events, promoters, and fighters as well. Owner Jeremy Augusta, an area leader in insurance for the past decade and current MMA fighter for Team Oxendine, is focused on bringing the best coverage to your event and your fighters. Combat Sports Insurance, call today at 423-571-2519 or visit CombatSportsInsurance.com. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Welcome back. Now, well, ever since we've covered KSW starting a few years back, one name has resonated above all, and that's Mehmed Kaladov, the most popular guy in Poland and probably in Europe right now. Now, finally, we have Mehmed with us on MMA Inside the Cage. We're so excited about this. Thank you for joining us, Mehmed, right here at MMA ITC. Też chciałem podziękować za to, że są zainteresowani są sportem polskim, polskim MMA. No, my man, you have a good situation with KSW. You make good money on your fights. Why do you want to leave for America and maybe fight for less? No, głównie interesują mnie walki w Polsce, wiadomo. No, właśnie z tych, z tych względów, co właśnie, o, 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 których, o których mówiłeś. No, well, can you tell us what organization you really want to fight for? Is it only UFC or is it Bellator? World Series of Fighting, possibly? Zawsze, jeżeli chodzi o UFC, to nie, nie jest możliwe, żeby walczyć e, gdzie indziej po, poza UFC. E, nie ukrywam, że bardzo sobie chciałbym walczyć w UFC, ale na razie nie jestem dla nich. Nie, nie mam do nikogo pretensji, bo to w żaden sposób, bo na razie nie jest dla nich produkt. Now, Mehmed, what exactly is your ultimate goal at this point in your career? Because you're in your prime right now, you're going to start hitting that slide. What's it going to be for you? What do you want at the end of all this? Mam osiągnięcie, jestem w tej chwili, no, e, maksymalne osiągnięcie jest w ten sposób, że e, podoba mi się ten, ten, ten stan, który jest teraz. E, Bije się zawodnikami na, na wysokim poziomie, wygrywam z nimi, dzięki Bogu. 
Now, Anderson Silva is the greatest middleweight in history. I think that is no question. How would you game plan for Anderson Silva if you ever get yourself in that position? Do you really believe you can beat him? Ucieczkę przez klatkę, no po prostu przeskoczyć przez klatkę i uciec. <laughs> Nie wiem, no to jest naprawdę znakomity zawodnik, to jest e, game plan. Można sobie gadać głupoty, że to to zrobił, to jest zawodnik widać, że... All right, so for your first fight here in the U.S., who is an opponent that you would most like to debut against? Prawda mi jest, jakby tutaj, myślę, by tam nie, nie byłoby źle, jeżeli chodzi o, o poziom zawodników i... So KSW has been a promotion that has been so very good to you. What can you say about that organization as a whole? Jak powiedziałem wcześniej, no, ja oceniam ten postęp, powiedziałem wcześniej, że, że, że naprawdę jest duży postęp. I dlaczego, dlaczego mówię o tym kolejnym cały czas tak dobrze i tego, że e, walczę tutaj, i tylko, no bo, bo naprawdę wiedziałem, jakie było, nie, może nie byłem od początku samego, ale byłem od 2007 roku, to właśnie była siódma edycja KSW, e, to już była najlepsza gala w Polsce, ale jak to się rozwijało, to, się, to po prostu był człowiek przy tym i chciałby przy tym zostać. Jakoś tam każdy z nas zawodników do tego się przyczynił. E, walczą dla tej federacji. Federacja robi dobrą pracę, dobrą robotę. W tej chwili, w tej chwili, no, KSW jest jedną najlepszych gal, gal na świecie. When Mehmet Kaldov isn't fighting and training, how do you like to relax? Trochę wolnego czasu, jak mam, no to spędzam z rodziną, e, ze swoją, albo wyjeżdżam do, również do rodziny, do swojej, do swojej mamy, do ojca. Well, thank you, Mehmet, so much for stopping by and good luck. Ja również dziękuję za wywiad, za, za to, że się interesujecie e, nasze, no tak jak to jest powiedziałem wcześniej na początku, to nic nie ma, wróć, wróć, wróć. I jeszcze raz dziękuję i zapraszam na 1 grudnia na KSW. Abu Dhabi Warriors after the break, but first four more finalists for Clip of the Week. Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMA Inside the Cage TV.com and clicking Get On Air. My son, he could have collapsed many times. I'm looking to be a young champion. I feel like I'm ready for the top. If he says he's going to be the middleweight champ, I believe him. No, very directed with his goals. Very good family guy, very serious. My daughter is my biggest fan, and uh, no one could argue with that. You know, I'm betting on Chris, 100%. I just don't see anyone stopping him. I'm confident. I know I can beat him, and I just want the shot now. MMA Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. Well, it's third round time. Time to impress the judges. You know, I just returned from Abu Dhabi a few days ago and had the pleasure to announce the inaugural Abu Dhabi Warriors event. Now, truly, this show was international. This is something we'd like to see. There was 10 different countries represented. You had Russia, Ukraine, uh, the U.S., all kinds of different countries involved here. And I think they had a really good show all together. They had a wonderful show. And, of course, we were represented as well. You over there. Mm -hmm. I watched the footage. You did a fantastic job as the ring announcer. Appreciate that. But, you know, it, it, it was. Abu Dhabi does something 
something that no other nation in the world can do, mm -hmm. and that is put all of these international fighters together in one event. And they did. They put guys like Travis View and Pele Landy and guys that we've been watching for many, many years in there with newer talent that perhaps mm -hmm. we we haven't been able to have the opportunity to see uh, and guys like Per Rock, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it was outstanding, and it's an event that's going to continue to rise in the future. I agree. Now, the production was elite. You had names like Big John McCarthy, Grant Waterman, Yuji Shimada as your referee. Really nice referees there. Uh, president of Deep, Pancration, WFC were in attendance, and even VIPs like Henzo Gracie and Nickelback's lead singer Chad Kroger was in attendance. Yeah, all the celebrities out there. Bro. We're not going to miss a chance to go to Abu Dhabi. Nobody is. Yeah. And uh, it, it was truly, truly outstanding. They are marquee, and once again, can't wait for the next one. Now, yeah, the production was hot. You had the financial benefactors really believing in this cause, and I think there's really no limit to what they can do. Let's go ahead and take the results here. Some quick stuff. One fight we were really excited for is Benjamin Brinza taking on Shimon Tassari, two undefeated European fighters. Brinza takes this one unanimously. Uh, Sengoku and deep veteran Kazunori Yukota goes over Strikeforce veteran Anatoly Safranov with the late RNC. Now, Pele Landy and Yevgeny Matenko. This is an interesting fight because it was a war. It was pretty much completely stand-up. Yeah. Matenko ends up taking it unanimously, but I think there was a lot closer than that. Now, I was sitting ringside. You watched the video. Yeah. I thought it was a close it, fight. It was a huge contrast uh, of styles. Mm -hmm. uh, Pele, of course, very unpredictable. Uh, Matinko, more of a refined striking style. Mm -hmm. uh, Pele wasn't happy. He thought he should have been closer than that, um, but it was a great fight no, nonetheless. Yeah, it really was. Then he gets to the main event. Now, this one is the most controversial of all, I think, as far as the decision. It's the main event between a pioneer in the sport, Travis View, battling Croatia's Maro Perek. Now, this is another really close one, and I'll tell you why, because Travis View got a lot of takedowns. Yeah. And the way I looked at it, if it was in America, if they had this judge in America, I think that Travis View may would have got the win. Uh, but Perrick landed a lot of strikes, a lot of low kicks, and I think that's what took him over the top. Well, you know, when you go internationally, especially in Europe, the kickboxing is really, really stressed. That's what they love to watch, and that is how a lot of these fights are scored. And that may be the situation. Again, Travis View not very happy with the, the outcome, uh, and he's been vocal about that. Mm -hmm. Now, Abu Dhabi Warriors 2 is already on the table. It's going to happen. Look for it early February. Head to AbuDhabiWarriors.com, and of course, stay tuned there and find out all the information on the next event. Our main event is going to be the main event from the card, so you can make the call yourself. It's Travis View, Maro Perrick from Abu Dhabi Warriors 1. It's your MMA Inside the Cage main event of the week. The time for talk is over. It's now time to shut up and throw down. From Dubrovnik, Croatia, fighting out of the blue corner, Maro Perak. His opponent from Minnesota, USA, Travis Poof. High kick from Perak. Low kick. Very aggressive. Bellator, Attila V. Will they go to the mat? Driven by Poof. Well, you look at Travis Poof. This is a man, his back is big enough to show a movie on. 10 second clap up. Try and find that sweet spot. There's no two ways about that. Boof powers forward. Held the leg momentarily. Perak had to hasten. Well, it comes out of the ring. This is getting to be Jurassic Park here tonight. Good low kick, but the takedown was there. It's causing all problems for Perak. There's the 10 second clap up. Great hands from Perak. Really tries to find that sweet spot. Driven down by Voof. Voof not giving up. Voof finding the corner to push his opponent there to hold it. Just to let you know, if you're watching in at home, Abu Dhabi Warriors 2 will be coming to you in February. Oh, there's the takedown. Some ground and pound action going on, but the bell is going to intervene. What a clash. For your winner by split decision. 
from the blue corner, Mauro. Mauro Perek has done it. Perek. Well, in fairness to Travis Buff, he doesn't look happy, but he is gracious in defeat. Well Fighters, promoters, fans, get hooked up. Send us your best knockouts and submissions by going to MMAinsidethecagetv.com and clicking Get On Air. Inside the Cage, brought to you by Combat Sports Insurance. That's time to call this one a wrap, but before we do, let's check out the last four finalists for Clip of the Week. It was uh, Wild West, was it? Was change oh, out. Boy. Good. This fight is over. That's it. That's See ya. Wild West is going to improve to 6-0 and here. And I cannot believe Chad Trukovic is letting it go this long. And finally. Let's take a look at this entire Dirty Dozen in its entirety, all 12 finalists for Clip of the Week. Uh, grind it out. David Evans, oh, with a knockout. West was at this change oh, out boy. Good. This fight is over. That's it. That's See ya. Wild West is going to improve the. Now get over to MMA inside the cage TV.com and make your vote count. It's the most important election of the week. I agree. I think it beats that whole presidential thing we just had. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at MMAITC, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for exclusive content. I'm Cyrus. P. I'm Casey Oxendine. And we'll see you next week inside, inside the, the cage. cage.